Ukraine's president says Russia is trying to erase his country as Putin's forces intensify their attacks on key Ukrainian cities. Russian paratroopers have landed in Kharkiv in the northeast with reports of street fighting, sustained rocket fire and airstrikes on the city. The bombardment of cities continues. Here, a tank shell, an apartment building northwest of the capital, Kiev. They have an order to erase our history, to erase our country, to erase us all. A 40-mile-long convoy of Russian armoured vehicles remains about 15 miles north of the capital. Below ground in our bomb shelter, the adrenaline has run out. People are visibly tired, visibly upset from everything that's going on. And when you come up, it's this, empty, and you can feel the tension. More than 800,000 people have streamed over Ukraine's borders with neighbouring countries seeking safety from Russian attacks. Boris Johnson says there is evidence that Russia has committed war crimes. And US President Joe Biden brands Vladimir Putin a dictator and says the Russian president misjudged how the West would hit back once he invaded Ukraine. Athletes from Russia and Belarus will have to compete under a neutral flag in the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. Supply disruption fears sees the price of oil rising above $110 a barrel, its highest level since 2014, and fuels concerns of higher prices at the pumps. Coming up in the sport later in the hour on the BBC News Channel, an emotional win for Alina Svitolina on the women's tour, who says it's her mission to unite the tennis community to stand with Ukraine. Good afternoon and welcome to BBC News. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is in its seventh day and fighting continues across much of the country. Russian paratroopers have landed in Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, with street fighting and missile strikes reported there. The situation is unclear in the Black Sea port of Kherson, where Russia claims it's taken control, but the city's mayor disputes that it has fallen. There's been little reported movement of the huge Russian military convoy on a route into the capital. Well, looking at the situation in Ukraine today, the areas in red here show the parts of the country now under Russian control, with the main battles highlighted in several key cities and regions. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of people continue to flee. The United Nations says more than 800,000 have now left. Our first report is from our Kiev correspondent, James Waterhouse. 